I always tell you that Wall Street's kind of like a fashion show because at any given moment, what's in or out of style is more important than what's actually good. Like I said at the top of the show, over the past few months, the cyclicals have caught fire. Companies do much better in expanding the economy, like that Rockwell automation, with the banks leading the way. And when the banks are in style, the fast-growing financial technology stocks tend to go out of style, as portfolio managers can only have so much exposure to one sector if they want to stay diversified. Which brings me to PayPal. The huge digital payment platform has been a fabulous long-term performer, but its stock did peak at 121 over the summer. And for months, it's been hard. By late October, it was trading at 96. That's when PayPal reported a spectacularly better than expected quarter, sending its stock up to 107 over the next couple of days. But since then, though, PayPal's quickly given back a big chunk of that move, drifting down to 102. Even though we know business is great, Wall Street doesn't seem to care right now. So what will it take to get the stock move again? Hey, let's take a closer look with John Rainey. He's PayPal's CFO and executive vice president of global customer operations to get a better sense of where his company's headed, what they're doing, and of course, because it is Veterans Month, what they are doing to help veterans. Mr. Rainey, welcome back to Mid Money. Hey, Jim, it's great to be on the show. Let me thank you for what you're doing by devoting time on your show to recognize veterans. Well, you know what, John? I was speaking with my friends Carl and David this morning on Squawk, and I said, one of the things they're so proud about PayPal, they recognize it can't be a day. We can't have this veterans' day. And then the next day be, okay, that was that. See you next November 11th. You've developed a Veterans Recognition Month, which to me has a lot more continuity. And I need you to explain it to others because they should adopt your method. Sure, sure. So we have at, uh, at PayPal, as part of our diversity and inclusion initiatives, we have a, several employee resource groups. And one of those is something that we call SERVE, which is devoted to supporting our veterans. And our serve group for the entire month of November is honoring our veterans through a number of different, different initiatives. But one of them is through the sale of poppies, which, uh, as you know, is uh, the red flower that is recognized internationally as a symbol of the sacrifice of our veterans. The proceeds from those sales this month will go to support our veterans and their families in need. I think that's great. You know, and for those of us who've been to Britain during this period, know that the poppy represents Flanders Field and how many millions of people were killed in World War I. Not forgotten in Britain. I think we should do just like them. Let me ask you something. How did you design your program? Because one of the things that I have found when I talk to veterans, and I do quite a bit of it, is they are a little bit lost in the business world. Why? Because they are so self-sacrificed that they only think of we. Yet when I want to go get a job at PayPal, I have to talk about me, me, me. How do you get over that? Well, we at PayPal are a better company, and we're actually a stronger workforce with veterans. Uh, our mindset is not that we're helping veterans by, by hiring them. We actually believe that they're helping us by coming to workforce. When employers look at uh, the qualities that they want in, in candidates, uh, military veterans have, have honed some of those skills in their career, things like teamwork and discipline, uh, leadership, and these are things that they can bring to the workforce and make us a, a much better company. I know, John, I got to ask you because you're, you guys are in some form or another in the news every day and, and positive. Uh, today, Facebook announced an initiative. Hey, if they had announced it three months ago, we would have said, who are those guys? But they announced a kind of a Facebook pay initiative. My first thought was, wow, they're good partners with PayPal. This is going to hurt PayPal's business. My second thought was, wait a second, I got John Rainey on. Let's ask him. Sure, sure. Well, Facebook has been a longstanding and valued partner for us and will continue to be. We partner with them in many aspects of, of their payments, uh, and we'll do that with, the, with this new announcement as well. I think when you step back and you think about the competitive landscape, uh, there are many people competing in this field, but, but really the competition is still cash. Good old, fashion, good old fashioned cash where 85% of the world's commerce is still taking place. And with, with things like what we're doing with Venmo and PayPal, as well as many of these other initiatives, we can make the, the, the movement and management of money a lot safer, simpler, and more secure. Well, they did it when you went to the Facebook page to look at the introduction. They did have an illustration that seemed remarkably like Venmo to me, as if, therefore, you wouldn't need Venmo. Uh, it, it, more competition the merrier, or is that just something that maybe you're going to have to start worrying about? Them? Well, w by having an open platform, we partner with a lot of companies. And if you think about the, the, what Venmo is in terms of the payments landscape, it, it has a, a social feature where people are, are sharing their experiences on that. And, and I think very, very importantly is it's, it's something that that millennial demographic is very attractive to. And so, you know, this is something that payments is, is a pretty 
sticky business and I think we'll continue to do so. So we're going to focus on continuing to create experiences for our customer base that allow them to use it in, in, in ways that they can and ways that we can monetize it as well. Okay, so John, this afternoon, Larry Kudlow, who sat adjacent to the president today at the Economic Club, came on our air. And he said, you know what, the president is very constructive, he believes, on Chinese trade talks. And even with the idea that some of our companies may be able to have an independent operation in China, some of our financials, isn't that what you have with the People's, when the People's Bank of China let you buy 70% uh, interest in, uh, in GoPay? You're already there. Well, well, look, so, you know, there's a lot of talk about China and some of the, the, the trade noise that's out there and impact on our businesses and others. And so I think it's first helpful to understand that, you know, the average PayPal transaction is about $60. People aren't, uh, generally speaking, using PayPal to buy aluminum in bulk in China. And so the, the, the trade noise is really not something that impacts our business. But China, to your point, Jim, is a very, very important part of our business. You know, some estimates have China uh, as being as much as 40 percent of all cross-border commerce by the year 2021. And if you look at our footprint today, we're relatively small in terms of the market share that we have in China. And so we're very excited that we're the first non-Chinese company to be granted a payments license to process payments online in China. And so we think it has the potential to be a pretty significant development for us over time. But just speaking ge geopolitically, John, I took it as a sign that maybe the Chinese are, it's an olive branch. I mean, they don't put out a sign that says, this is an olive branch. But the fact is, is they let PayPal in. But I also know that you and Dan Schulman have a different culture. And they like your culture because they like the way that you help, have always been invested with people who are not necessarily of means. So perhaps it is political or do they just think that it's time? Well, I think it's easy to turn some of this into, you know, is this political or is it not? But the fact of the matter is, is it's actually good for Chinese consumers and merchants, and it's good for those that want to shop in China, in China as well. You know, with our network of 300 million customers around the world and over 20 million merchants, we're now enabling commerce for Chinese consumers to go shop at that network of merchants and for consumers around the world to continue to shop at, at Chinese merchants. So I truly think it is, is a win-win, but, but it is, I think, probably a, an important development and the overall relations, given that uh, we are the first non-Chinese company to be granted a license there. Well, I'm thrilled that you came on the show to talk about everything from the, uh, the license in China to the Facebook relationship. But yes, most important, Veterans Month, John Rainey, who is the CFO of PayPal. Always good to see you, sir. Good to talk to you, Jim.